Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome all right, back. All right, all right. To, oh, oh. Uh, welcome back to another wonderful Wednesday. Finally got Dad back on the, the couch. The old man. It's been I'm, a I'm, hot it's, minute. It's my bedtime. It's, <laughs> I'm already like, let's go. To, <laughs> we'll make it quick. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, it's been a great, great crowd. We'll see you next week. <laughs> it's been great. It's a great sermon. Come Sunday. Come early. Good night. Man, uh, oh, man. I'm glad to be back. I missed y'all. You, this. Seeing everybody, saying everybody. Let us know where you're watching from, what you're doing for dinner. Kathy just made smoked salmon for dinner. It was oh, so, so delicious. You're definitely going to want to. Or did you eat I before? I had to pull myself away to come here. I didn't, uh, I didn't eat before I came. I was so asked. excited about it, I forgot my key. <laughs> I wish we had like some thumb key print locks that we could put yeah, on here. That, that would be a good idea. That would be a great idea. That way we wouldn't have to worry about carrying keys and it's a lot more secure and we'll figure it out. Yeah, that's a good idea. We should look into that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let us know where you're watching from. <laughs> that's super. They're already popping. I love that. It's the countdown. Come on, going. y'all. They, are, they already know the deal. They already know the deal. If y'all don't know, we have a delay between the, the live and the comments. There's about a minute and a half, so... That's why when you guys ask a question, it takes us a while to catch up. Uh, real quick, the announcements. Uh, the next Women's Fellowship is tomorrow, tomorrow if you're watching this live, November 14th. That's at 6.30. I've also heard um, a little something about the next one, the monthly one uh, coming up for yes. Christmas. Lauren Dennison was running some ideas by me. That sounds like it's going to be a fun time. Mm -hmm. The Fire Youth Friendsgiving is Sunday, uh, November 17th at 6 p.m. That's the regular youth time. Um, Is that this Sunday? That's this Sunday. They're doing the Friendsgiving. They're going to do uh, some food. Um, I've got something planned for that Uh as well. Kelsey, the kids are trying to kill Kelsey at home. Uh, (laughs) We have our annual Friendsgiving potluck, which... Yay food. Come on. Uh, that's November 23rd. Um, at that's a good thing. PM. Can we throw a little gas on that fire? Yeah. Because that's for everybody to be a part of that. And we're loving and building community here. Uh, there are a lot, and I'm going to shout it out. There are a lot of new people, a lot of new families that are streaming into this church. And so this is a great opportunity for them, for us to meet them and have a good time of fellowship just together. Um, And if you are one of those people that happens to live in St. Augustine, you don't have much family, you don't have many people to gather around or that kind of thing, this is for that. Yeah, yeah, just come and come, come on. And hang out and get some food. That's why we put on like the fall festival and all the events. Just, you know, we like it to be uh, more than just a word here at Family Church. Yeah, it's <laughs> all year long, every month. How many days in the year? I mean, it all year. Well, it depends if there's a leap year because the number changes. Oh, it could be. Uh, more than that. The next, <laughs> the next blood drive is December first. Uh, Sunday, it's, that's immediately after church. I was wondering why there was no time, and then I remembered that it's immediately after church. The next Dining with Dignity is December 5th. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where they feed the homeless downtown. That's at 5.30. Uh, and then, it can, you know, in December, we also have, we're going to have our classic Christmas movies night again, and the second annual. annual. That will be the second annual classic Christmas movies. Not the and first. the second annual ugly Christmas Come sweater. Come on. Uh, we've already got the tree up. Yeah, I saw that. Oh. And it makes us happy. The kids love doing it. They what put all is their... happening? We take them every year to pick out a new um, ornament mm-hmm. that they get. So it's cool to see their progression. And Aww. then they open up the box and they have all the memories and all that stuff. Um, That's beautiful. And then they were handing hand. me ones that I guess I picked out. And I couldn't remember any of them. I, I had no idea. So I've already forgotten. Uh, but yeah, so that we're going to have that with the ugly Christmas sweater thing. I guess I'll have to get another one. I still have the Griswolds Christmas, yep. which we just watched that the other night, too. What They've a got classic. a bunch of them come out. I, I clicked on one the other night, and then my whole feed on Facebook turned into <laughs> ugly sweaters. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Lord. That's how it does. If you click on one ad, you're done. It's There's your whole algorithm. I'm going to go after it. Even if you just think about it now. Sandy Ridge, North Carolina. Kathy's in the house. West Palm Beach. You're there. We're glad to have you guys. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Tanya's having Cracker Barrel for dinner. Man, we, we had that on the way back from... Um, come on. From Georgia, mm-hmm. I got a, a. I love cracker. What is that thing? 
Country fried steak. Yes. Oh, it was so good. And I got the loaded hash browns. It was cover it with delicious. gravy. Uh, Kathy, does this take the place of Thanksgiving? No. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it does not. <laughs> it's just a part of what we're doing. Is it before or after the actual Thanksgiving? What is? For our thanks, our, our Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving here. Uh, I, I think it's before because it's like the date for this year. Yeah, Thanksgiving's cool. on the 28th this year. Which, really? That yeah, I guess because it's the fourth, for, th- the fourth Thursday of the month. Easy for you to say. But that started... The month started on a Friday, so okay. that's what's throwing... Because every time I look at the calendar, I'm like, why is it the last we'll week? We'll probably be having a hurricane about that time. Well, Sarah's out there. You know, Sarah, anybody named Sarah, it's just out there <laughs> kicking up dust in, the, in the Gulf already coming at us. It's like, what? This will be the latest one in decades. Is it? Yes. I, man, I'll tell you, after uh, tracking them for years right. and living around them, I have completely just disconnected for the last <laughs> couple of years from it in order to just like to breathe. That's probably smart. Yeah, it's nice. It, it, it is nice. I know. Kelsey, if you were here, it would be even worse. <laughs> she, she, uh, well, whatever. Anyways, we're here to discuss. Um, Come on. Yeah, uh, I, I was, get to I was discuss keeping it a surprise, because you skipped church Sunday. I watched a little bit. Oh, please. You I know what that means? I heard, um, <laughs> I heard you say that I can't sing, and then I heard you say, turn it off, and then the kids uh, were running around, and, and then we started playing. So That was it, the it one was line nice. that I said, the one thing that boy don't got on me is he can't sing. Now I got it. I'm going to take vocal lessons one day and just like rip it out. Hey, I can't sing either, but it don't <laughs> stop me. There, Kelsey said I can't wear the same sweater as last year. No, nope, you got to get a new one. Um, so this, tonight, we ha- you had... <clears throat> Uh, what was it, Second Kings 6, mm-hmm. on Just Because I Can't See It. And I was actually listening to just the um, Second Kings on the way here, just mm-hmm. to soak yeah. back in that. And, One, uh, two, three, four, five is like, wow. A lot of the, well, a lot of the key, well, not a, I don't want to say a lot. The big ones in Kings like that with uh, Elijah and Elisha, those are always fun to read. Mm-hmm. Then when mm-hmm. you start getting towards the later bit of Kings where you just hear how terrible everyone is right. and Mid-stricted. how, how oh. they got worse and worse and worse, you're like, oh, okay. That's yeah. It got on. worse. <laughs> but I told him, I said, right, go home and read Kings first or Second Kings 1 through 5. Uh, so much going on there, the more that could happen in a lifetime. But then chapter 6 is where we, we planted our feet for the morning. And the idea was on the Sunday school story that you probably heard so many times before growing up, I know I did, that that um, they were surrounded by an enemy. The king had surrounded them. He sent an army, an entire army, for just Elisha and this other guy. And uh, Elisha just prayed, opened his eyes that he can see that those that are with us are more than those that are with them. He, you know, I noticed this that, that in the ESV as I read it. He did not say those who are with us are more than those who are against us. Because that's how I've always heard it quoted. He said, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. So he didn't turn it into an anti-thing. He turned it into a positive thing. Yeah. So that, had, uh, I was trying to find that verse. Yeah. The um, uh, chapter, uh, that was, verse uh, six, 17. 16. Oh, those 16, that are yes. with us are more than those that are with them. Yeah, yeah. I, that's, I've always heard it the same way too. The, the, yeah. Those that are with more us are more than those, than those that, are that are against us. us. And it's not Which like is... That. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I figured um, you'd want to dig in on that and figure yeah, out the well, reason why. My thing with that, like just off the top of my head, with that is, you know, when you when you hear when you read the misquoted one of those against us, obviously you think, okay, that brings to my light when Jesus says, you know, those that mm-hmm. are not for me are against mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. But he just says those that are with them, which doesn't necessarily even mean that they would be against them. But obviously they were. My thing that I, I, I liked when I was um, driving here was that Elisha prayed, oh Lord, please open his eyes mm-hmm. that he may see. So when I read that and I think of the faith, the faith I, I can't talk tonight, the faith that Elisha has or had, it sounds like he could see it. Or he just had the faith that he knew it was there and his prayer was for the benefit mm-hmm. of the other guy. That way the other guy could see it and get his confidence raised up because, you know, like you go out and of course the first thing, think about it, you know, in modern day terms, you would you would walk out on your porch with a cup of coffee and your entire uh, 
compound Whoa. is surrounded by an army, and you're like, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And then this other guy's just like, oh, which is get through the chopper. Then you think, I mean, that's already <laughs> terrifying enough. But then you have Elisha come up, and he's like, hey, open this guy's eyes so he can see. And now all of a sudden, you can see, you can see chariots of fire I'm and winning. angels and heaven's armies. I don't know what would be more scary. That was like a Jesus thing. Uh, you, 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 you. Your conversation spurred me to think about Jesus when Jesus was at the tomb of Lazarus. And he said, um, I know that you hear me, but for those that are standing around me, I want to say this. Lazarus, come forth. And then he manifested the the resurrection there. I think that's a powerful thing because either he knew it was there, he he could see them already, or he knew that they were there. The whole point of the sermon, if you missed it, um, was that even though you cannot see the thing, doesn't mean that it's not there. Um, It's just, for me as a young child, I I disclose this Sunday, um, growing up I was afraid of everything, spiders, snakes, the dark, strange situations, all of that. And this, my Sunday school teacher, one of my Sunday school teachers shared this little story. And it it set me free because as a child I started trusting in, believing in that, that, that God always had angels with me. Uh, the guardianship of angels, the sovereignty of God over your life, that no matter what your situation is, that God always has more with you than with them. It saved me, and I no longer, I'm no longer afraid of the dark, no longer afraid of crowds, no longer afraid of intimidation. It changes everything. Yeah, it's definitely the confidence you have knowing that God is with you and that he has angels, I, I would say, assigned to you to help protect mm-hmm. you. Uh, yeah, that's just, and it don't take a whole lot of them. No. Woo! And I love, and this is not the Bible and the, the fiction book, the, the This Present Darkness that I bring up all the time by Frank Peretti. Mm-hmm. I love, in that book, it kind of, I don't know, that it, I know it's fiction, but it gives me the idea of... Um, of how spiritual warfare kind of is and how it, how it, uh, how it mm-hmm. plays out, if you will. And in, in the book, they have that where you have, uh, there's like the, the pastor and the other various people that they have angels assigned to them. Mm-hmm. And as, as the people pray, it ends up God uses their prayers and strengthens the angels around them to be stronger in the battle against mm-hmm. the demonic forces and all that stuff. And even though there's a ton of demons there that you can't outplay no. and outweigh the prayers of the saints. But there's also the times where with God's sovereignty where um, the there's a couple of the guys, the two main characters, they have to go through a trial mm-hmm. and the angels are talking with each other and they're worried about it, but they're trusting God themselves because, and they're like, well, you know, we want to step in and help this person but the like the head angels kind of like no you've got you've got to let this play out like he has to I think one of the lines is like he has to be crushed in order to wow. be to be like restored and it's kind of that it's just like spiritual warfare you mm-hmm. you have to walk through the battle and the test mm-hmm. uh, you know you have to look at the army in order to see you know God is on my side you still have right. to have yeah that I don't moment. know how else to say it other than like have that moment of. Fear. Oh, I don't yeah. want to say it that way because we don't have a spirit of fear, but I think you guys understand what but I'm saying. I think fear is, and, and I said it Sunday, fear is absolutely a real thing. Sometimes, so many times in my uh, experience, when people teach on faith, they give faith and fear as an either-or proposition. You either have faith or you don't. You either have fear or you don't. I've found it in my life, 62 years, to be that there's a complex mixture of both of them that, yes, I have faith, but there, there's a fear mixed in there a little bit with it because of the overwhelmingness of that situation. Paul said it, and without were fighting, but within were fears. So there were fightings, and on the outside he had faith to believe, but inside he was dealing with fear. One of my favorite scriptures is when um, the, the Word of God encourages us to not speak against somebody else because their angel is standing before the Father. Their face is always before the Father in heaven on your behalf. Um, it just encourages you to know that you're, you're not on your own, you're not alone, you're never at the mercy of circumstances, you're never over, overwhelmed, you're never outnumbered. God has always got more with you than with them. I see everybody's talking to Amanda Autry. We're glad that you're there. You didn't come here by accident. We're glad you stopped by the family room tonight. Check out familychurch.social. 
And uh, look at some of our stuff, some of our sermons. Yeah, go to our YouTube. You don't, I don't fit into organized religion. <laughs> Neither, Neither do we. we. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you can't see our arms, but uh, we're not really about organized religion here. We're about a relationship. I don't like disorganized over. religion, <laughs> but I, I, we know exactly what you're saying. Oh, yeah. We used to be called the church for people that don't like church. Uh, but that's, you know. Now we have many names that <laughs> We don't need to repeat live on the air. <laughs> Hello! But Amanda, we're glad you're there, and we hope you get a great welcome through the people tonight that are talking to you already. Glad you're here. Um, but yeah, this definitely. Is... I would come Sunday, because we are not... We are for everybody, um, and it's not everybody's cup of tea, but we are definitely for everyone. Um, now's a great time to jump in. how church is supposed to be. Oh, unfortunately, I'm in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Well, oh, there well, you go. Well, then you can watch us live. You can watch us live and come visit someday. Hey, speaking of that, did I... T- oh, you got a thought coming. I saw it when you threw your hand up like well, that. I was just going to say the, the thing with the angels standing before the throne and interceding on your behalf, and then you also have where it says Jesus intercedes on our behalf as well, and it's just... I mean, you think about that. Like, how would that affect and change your life if you can grasp grasp the fact that you have angels and Jesus Come interceding on. and praying for you uh, without without ceasing. Mm-hmm. Just man, watching you over Jesus you. It's like a you. child's prayer. When I prayed as a child, I used to when I would say my nighttime prayers, and this is just so real. I would literally, in my little child's brain, feel like. Angels were watching over me, and that I was in a safe little space in a cocoon, and I was I was safe. There was nothing gonna. When I was a kid, vampire movies were like horrifying, <laughs> and so I would pray at night before I'd go to bed. Get God would watch over me, <laughs> keep me from getting bit by a vampire. God honored that, and I slept all night long, and I still do. There's something powerful about knowing that, and that was the whole point of the sermon. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night up in North Carolina a few weeks ago. Uh, it's been a it's been a challenging year. Have you been around to see that, or um, it, no? yeah, I've kind of you know just yeah. been catching. All I didn't of know those it. hypothetically. Sometimes it, you know you don't get affected as much as I do. You know, people just they just love me. It's something about you. It's I just, just that's my my, uh, my your boyish my, good looks, my great or... face that always looks happy. Um, right, my, you, my you're, you're resting calm demeanor face. in the pulpit. Uh, it's just amazing. Very calm. Very. Demeanor. I woke up and I was instantly overwhelmed by circumstances. We were in the middle of contract negotiations to buy the land, uh, the sixty acres of land that we bought out in Elkton. And I was thinking about that, and then there were other things that were going on, other issues that were going on with people and challenges and things like that, as there always are. And I was just instantly overwhelmed with emotions and feelings and circumstances, and I don't get like that. So I knew it was a spiritual thing. So I started to pray, and then, and then the Holy Spirit reminded me of this story. And man, I, it fired me up, and I couldn't wait for you to skip church so that I could, I could deliver. <laughs> You're just waiting. To I was just waiting to swing the bat and go for the fences and like Otani, knock it out of the park. I don't even know who that is, but I was uh, <laughs> excited to do it. And I hope it encouraged somebody. It encouraged me. I encouraged myself. Uh, because it's, it's a powerful thing to know that somebody needs to hear that. It, it, sometimes, you, you know, you get caught in this thing of looking at... I said it Sunday. As a matter of fact, this is one of my favorite quotes in my own sermon. You get caught looking at all the wrong things because you're looking in the wrong places. Fear uh, makes you want to look around to see where my help's going to come from. Uh, depression looks down because your, your head goes to the ground. Pride looks within. Uh, and all of the doubts and the fears... But God wants you to look up. He wants you to look. In fact, I stole a thing that you did. Did you see it? I don't know if you caught that. No. He looked up. I didn't see it. I went, I, he looked up. He looked up. <laughs> he looked up. And then everybody started coming along with me. And it was just reminiscent of what you did that Started time. screaming. So, <laughs> I stole it from you. The, uh, that reminded me too, because you were talking about um, faith and fear, how everybody always tries to separate the faith and the fear thing. And yes, God hasn't give a, given us a spirit of fear, but it reminds me of the, the one quote that, that uh, Stephen Furtick has said, where you can't, you can't truly have hope without the risk of disappointment. Come on. Mm-hmm. And so like that, like with, with faith, you still have to have that other side of fear. Mm-hmm. And then what, the best way I can say it is what brings to mind is, is like, well, obviously you have faith in God, but you're also supposed to have fear of God. Yeah, that awe of God. So you're supposed to, you know, not be afraid of God, but obviously there is that fear because he is all powerful kind of thing. And the other side of that is like 
God, everybody's like, oh, you know, why would a loving God send people to hell? You know, that lovely argument that Mm -hmm. everyone always comes up with. And then there's the others, you know, why would an all loving God? Well, yeah, God is all love, but you can't have love unless you also hate. And Mm -hmm. God hates sin. He hates what sin has done to the world. He just, he literally just hates sin. That's why he is love. You have to have, you can't have one without Mm -hmm. the other kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Powerful things. Um, when we start thinking that we are, are not in that position, that, that we forget about the th- faith in God, we forget about the sovereignty of God, we forget that if God be for us, who can be against us? We stop, and I said this Sunday, I said we, we start letting our flesh interrupt our faith. We stop, um, we start looking at giants instead of the greatness of God. We, we start seeing ourselves as grasshoppers rather than giant killers. And when that happens, it's a subtle thing, but it changes your perspective. It changes the way that you approach how you're going to do this. But that when you 14? know that God is with you, and <laughs> there's no way that you can be defeated. I, I love that moment because Elisha said, pray that his eyes would be open, that he would see that those that are with us are more than those that are with them. And that guy's eyes opened up. Can you imagine that moment of revelation for that guy? Well, That's what I'm went, saying. Like you'd be oh. like, oh, but there's that. That would also give you the fear because you see the the glory of God. You see heaven's army, which mm-hmm. no man Come is going to defeat. I mean, they're eternal beings, so they're not going to die. How are you going to beat them? So then your eyes open to that, and then you're like, well, what if you know, like they could kill me, kind of thing. <laughs> but you know, they're on my. Thank God, they're on my they're side. On team they're, Elisha. they're fighting on our behalf, kind of thing. So that's that's. There's so much of that layer of revelation where you get that, where it's just, you know, they're 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 for me. They're not against me. But Come if on. they were, like, I'm <laughs> not winning at all. What a powerful thing to know that God is for me, not against me. And it changes, man. When you when you like that, when you grasp that, I had that. Uh, Last night or the other, the night before, it might have been last night, because um, our AC was being funky again. And uh, at your house, yeah, we rebuked that air conditioner. That's what exactly what I did. Man. I went out there to fix it, and Come on. I just I, I went to touch it, and I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna pray over this thing. Let's go. And I started going, and I and at first I was kind of like, this is dumb because it's just an electronic thing and I was sitting there praying and then like I felt something in me shift (laughs) and like I was I'm glad Kelsey didn't come out (laughs) of the the house and come around the corner because I just I started going on about the the church property and the property around the house and rebuking everything you know telling the enemy they can't come come on it was just I went down it it just stirred something up and then I I turned around and don't you uh, think that's how we should always be yeah that's Come on, the, yeah. yeah, that's where we're going. That's the shift that's happening here, the stirring up that's happening here, is to get us back to that place where we do stuff like that a lot. That's how it's supposed to be. I mean, you think of how they were in the Bible times, and you have, you know, Jude, where we are in my series of, you know, contending for the faith, and then you think of these guys that that had so much zeal, for what they saw and experienced mm-hmm. that, that when they were told like, no, you didn't see this. If you say, you know, that you did, we're going to kill you. And mm-hmm. they, they died for their faith. Yeah. And you don't do that unless it's something you truly believe in that's real. Like, I'm not dying for a lie. You, you know, yeah. I, the, everybody's said a lie at some point in their life. Mm-hmm. And you might take it to your deathbed. But if somebody was like, hey, either tell the truth or tell this and you're going to get killed. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna, you know. I can repent later. Yeah, ex- well, yeah. You're not gonna, you're not gonna hold on to a lie mm-hmm. that if you said the truth, you would die. So they hung on to the truth that Jesus did exist and He did die for our sins and rose again. Mm-hmm. And that's, that, I mean, that's just we've got to get back to that that zeal mm-hmm. for the for God for the house of God that that zeal that. Speaking of us. that, speaking of that, um, I think that that's one of the things that has come to characterize how you approach. Um, ministry. Um, and so I, I wanted to go there for just a couple of minutes. And being you're right, uh, I, that you start calculating. I, I do that. I did that a lot. Uh, how much do I have? Can I make it? Can I get through it? And that's not what God wants you to do. None of that stuff matters. Uh, it, just to know that God's got you. Um, but you have come to be characterized as super passionate and super zealous. Um, 
And that has really caused you some grief among people that just have some unbelief in their life and didn't want to admit that maybe you've gotten lukewarm. Maybe I, I, I've talked to a lady in tears here Sunday who said, I've got to tell him that his passion has restored my faith back to where it needs. She was in tears right there at the front. Um, and you know who she is, but she was just crying. She said, I just got to, and I, I said, you need to tell him because he needs to hear that. But you've come to be characterized by passion and you're encouraging us to get fired up and to go after this and to speak up and to be bold. And so Sunday, uh, as a part of that, in the sermon, I, I said a couple of things that were pretty, uh, pretty pointed about the culture that we are in and the way that we live. And one a lady who was online, she, she made a comment and said, that. the, the first part of this sermon was great <laughs> until you went political. Well, I, ma'am, I, I don't know that I went political, but even if I did, um, I think it's important for us to be the salt and the light. It's important for us to speak the truth as it is in love, of course, always. Um, if I did not speak it in love and it didn't seem like to you that it was in love, I understand that. But I assure you that it was. We have got to get to the point where we call people back to their, their faith. I'm excited for what I see happening in the church. I'm excited for what I see happening in the nation. But, um, you know, at the end of the sermon, I said, I will be even more undignified than this. Uh, I've decided and determined that I'm going to be that the voice. I'm going to speak up and say what needs to be said. So keep it up. That's what we're. That there's. Oh man, there's so much in in that because you you can tie like my passion and everything and in this the way the Holy Spirit just takes over when I'm up here preaching. And you, I mean, you tie that into that your passage of uh, 2 Kings 6, open his eyes so he can see. You tie it into mm -hmm. Jesus uh, praying, you know, hey, God, you know, God, I know you hear me, but this is for the benefit of everyone else. That's sometimes you need that one catalyst that <laughs> reignites the spark for everyone else to see. Yes. And we, we, we hear it all the time where, it's, you know, you're like, oh, if, if you would just... You know, if you would be bolder in your faith and you stand up and you talk, then that would lead the people around you in, uh, to be stirred up and go down that same path as well. So mm -hmm. it's, I mean, that's really all that, that happened. It's not like I'm, I'm not putting on a show. That's just genuine passion. It's courageous. It's contagious. And, and that's the thing, too. And then, like, with the political stuff... <laughs> There, there is no government without God. I mean, Jesus mm -hmm. literally tells us that the... the Amen. What was it? To Pilate, I think it was, where he's like, you only have authority that God has given you, mm -hmm. that yes. I, and, I, and you're not taking my life, I'm laying it down. Like, mm -hmm. the government only has authority when that God has put them there. I mean, whether we like the, the candidate in charge or not, right. uh, and the reality is probably more often than not, the reason why we get the ones that aren't for our good, that lead us astray, is because we were already heading astray and yeah. turning our backs like to God. Bible. Well, like you look at the Israelites, and they go and they Judges. start worshiping the false idols, and then they end up getting a king that takes them farther, and it's just God... I don't know if this is incorrect, so you can call me out, but it, it's almost like you get those those kings and those those people in charge... Uh, above you as as kind of like a form of God's judgment on you, like you're you're wanting to go oh, into yeah. rebellion. Here you're going farther well, into rebellion. You, you and reap you can what either, you sow. Exactly. You you can either wake up and repent, or you can keep rejecting me and and see what happens when the cup of wrath gets stored up for only so long. So it's uh, that's what's amazing is the churches that try to circumnavigate politics, and and it's not about completely just standing up here and blasting your political views Agreed. and all that. 1,000%. There's, there's a time and a place and there's a way to handle that, that conversation. But the reality is we're supposed to be praying yes. for our leaders in office and they only have authority because God put them there. Mm -hmm. And the other side of it is when they start stepping on the boundaries of Come theology, on. you have to stand up. Yeah, I'm not going to get political until you get theological. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Elijah had to step up in front of King Ahab. It was a fact. John Baptist stepped up in front of King Herod. It's a fact. It, it happens, you know, and, and it, you know, it, it may look like that we're, go, we're going out of bounds when you do that, but I, I assure you, you're not. You're, you're completely theological. I heard a guy explain it like that the other day. He said, I, I'm not going to have anything to do with politics until politicians start having something to do with theology. Exactly. And if they start stepping into theological realms, 
uh, then we, by definition, have to set, be that voice and, and step up and speak. We're following the patterns of Elisha, Elijah, John the Baptist, King Jesus, all of those others. It was it, it was just a little thing that you know it, it kind of burned me because the night of the, the after the election, um, I, I saw a father and I shared the story that he was on the news, some news program saying that his 13-year-old daughter had been crying all night because now she's not allowed to get an abortion. Well, that's not true. That's just, sir, that's just not the way that works, but you, you just... Oh, man. And I just, but then again, you know, the other side of that is, well, why is a 13-year-old... That's what I was, yeah, I was going to get ...having it. a thought about an abortion? We need to have that discussion and try to figure that out. I think the church needs to be involved in morality and involved in those... It has to be. We're supposed to be. We're supposed to be calling sin out... Uh, to shine light on it so that people can repent and turn from their sin. I mean, if we don't call sin out, how are people going to know that they're sinning? Yes, amen. And then you're just leading people astray. You're being the false prophets that I talk about in Jude all the time when you just, you don't even have to twist the gospel to allow you to sin. You just don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing. You're just letting people go deeper into sin because you just, you don't have um, the courage <laughs> Come on. To, <laughs> to speak out against it. Courage is in short supply. And, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, we have to, that's, oh, don't get political. Well, they're getting theological. When they're trying to mm -hmm. um, tell you that a man can be a woman or a woman can be a man and tell you that, you know, the child, somehow if, if you kill a pregnant woman, it's double homicide, but an abortion is celebrated. See? Uh, and, and, and it's, it's virtuous. Just, you, they're, they've encroached. On our, that's something I'm going to bring up Sunday. I think a little yeah. bit because that just sparked an what idea. What stirred it in that. me um, is is all of that, and it just stirred me up to. I had allowed myself because of circumstances, even as a seasoned Christian, to start looking at the wrong things. I started looking at this and that, and people and betrayals and you know ex things and friends and that kind of thing. And so when I got it squared up in my head, the Holy Spirit brought me, and I gave a shout out to the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. We need him. Um, get your head right. Get your heart right. Get your eyes back where they need to be and start looking at the right things. And so then I, I came out of that experience fired up about looking for all the right things. And I, and I went on a rip about now I'm looking to see what God is doing. I'm looking for the work of God and how God is at work. I Just because you don't see it, somebody, doesn't mean that prodigals are not returning because they are. Uh, they've been in a wilderness place, and you can only stand the wilderness for so long, and that gets old. You want to you, you want to go back home. You want to go back to a place where there was something more than that. Prodigals are returning. Drug addicts and alcoholics are being set free. We're seeing it happen all the time. Lost people are getting saved. There is revival. We talked about the revivals that are happening on college campuses and that are happening in football teams and entire teams stopping and just getting baptized at once. It's, it's amazing. Stop sugarcoating the sin. Amen, Mitch. That's the thing. They, they want to make it taste good. And Cotton candy, Christy. That's just the... the we, we're supposed to be calling this stuff out. And, and it's not calling it out to bash people or to judge them. Amen. It's calling them out so they can turn to repentance. And there was something you just said a second ago, and I lost it. If you don't know, if, if someone doesn't tell you, you don't know what you don't know. No, and that's, that's the problem, too, with so many Christians, especially in... Uh, America with just avoiding confrontation and hey. avoiding saying anything mm -hmm. because we're scared to hurt someone's feel. I mean, look at Kelly just said on here that she her son got upset with her because she said something in truth Spoke to truth. him, and then he she woke up to a text thanking uh, her for convicting Come him. Come on! And I just had a conversation with Kelsey the other night, and she got me on something, and I'm. You know, it's you need those people to call you out on those things, otherwise yeah. you just keep going down the same path. And then like that, like focusing on the wrong things, that just the image I got in my head when you said that is we're supposed to be moving forward in our faith and looking forward towards um, our inheritance and our eternity and, and all of that kind of stuff. But when the bad stuff starts happening, we're still supposed to move forward, and we try to, and we do, but the problem is we're, we're moving forward, but we end up walking backwards because we're looking at all the stuff that's already happened behind us. You know, oh, these people just said all this about me. Oh, these people have mm -hmm. been leaving my life. Oh, these people are doing this. They're doing that. They're doing that. Yeah. And then you get stuck, and mm -hmm. that seed of, like, bitterness and resentment gets mm -hmm. off of them and planted into you because you're too busy looking behind instead of looking forward and being like, man, you know, I'm a 
pray for you, mm -hmm. but clearly God's pruning you off of my life in this season. Amen. I'll pray for you, you know, that you repent, but I'm going to keep pressing forward and, and keep going and keep running my race and enduring until the Come end. On. I mean, that's that's what we're supposed to do is, is walk it out and run our own race. We're supposed to look forward to what we're you know, walking into, not stuck looking backwards. Amen. The minute you start doing that, you start failing. We've talked about it a lot. I, I truly believe the best decisions in life are not made on what you may lose, but on what you will gain. Um, I, I got this at a Saturday night prayer. By the way, guys, if you haven't been to Saturday night prayer, join us this Saturday, five o'clock right here in the sanctuary. Uh, everybody's welcome. It's just a 45 minutes of prayer. One Saturday I was here and we were in this season of turmoil and transition and people coming and going and that kind of thing. And the Holy Spirit dropped this thought in my head that you're not going to be moving forward um, thinking about those that you are missing. You're going to be moving forward with the people that are pressing in right now. And that's what's exciting. That's what's happening right now. People Man, you are think pressing about, in. Uh, in, in Acts, was it chapter, I think, one, where they're casting the lots to see who's replacing mm -hmm. Judas? They're yeah. not spending all the time like, man, did you believe yeah, Judas, Judas did, did that? This. Wow, was that was terrible. terrible. You know, I can't believe Judas did. They were just like, okay, yeah, you know, that's that sucks. Let's move on. We yep. still got work to do. We got the gospel to get out to people. It's just, just you got to kind of amen. cut your losses and... And, I think we need to stay hyper-focused on that. Sharing the good news, sharing the gospel, staying in the word of God. Because that's what people are looking for right now. Kathy and I went home, and I told her the story about the, the couple that I prayed with Sunday. <laughs> and she, she was like, whoa. But people right now are hungry for a clear word. They're tired of the sugar coating. They're tired of the cotton candy. They're tired of preachers trying to dance around these issues that we used to have a solid voice on and call sin, but now we don't. We try to find better ways to, to placate everybody because we want the, the, the goal is to get you to come back next Sunday. No, the goal is not to fill the seats. The goal is to touch your soul, to fill heaven. So I, I think that the, the more that you can do that, the more that you just preach the truth and and let it fly and speak the word and stay in the word as you do, I think it's gonna it's just gonna bring eternal reward. There's a, a passage. It's in the Bible. While you're looking that yeah, up, give I'll give second. you a second to look it up. I did want to make one clarification Sunday. Uh, I said. Um, uh, we look to the doctor for healing when he is the great physician. We look to the government to support us when he is our provider. We take another pill when he is awake to take away our pain. But I also said this, we make another appointment with our therapist when he is our counselor. I had a couple of people challenge me on that. And so, uh, you know, uh, Chad, say it again. I, I just, we make another appointment with our therapist confirmation, so. when he is our counselor. Um, and I, just a clarification on that. I'm a, I'm a counselor. I have a degree in counseling. I, I believe in counseling. I believe in talking to people. In the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Somebody said uh, privately to me, they said, well, aren't you a counselor? Do you think counseling is no good? And that's no, that's not what I meant. So following your pattern of clarifying, I want to clarify that. Yeah, sometimes you need to speak to somebody. Jared and I sat down with a lady today that just needed some counsel. So, yeah. I'm not saying just cut your therapist off, cut your counselors out, but have wise counsel. But at the end of it all, realize that ultimately he is our best counselor. The Holy Spirit can counsel you better than we can. Don't get dependent on secular therapists to keep you coming back because their, their job is to get you to come back for the next appointment. Uh, God wants to heal you. He wants to, to get you set free and delivered and get your life back together. Wholeness. But there is, there's also that aspect too of... And not like a secular person or a therapist, but there's that aspect of going to therapy um, for you to be maybe going to the secular therapist to be a light into their life to share the good mm -hmm. news. Or if you go to a, a Christian counselor, therapist or whatever, to where they help you heal. It's, you know, God, yeah, God, that's like that. We're not cutting out counseling or anything like that because obviously it's a good thing. Therapy is a good thing. Um, and yes, God is the great physician and the ultimate counselor, but you know, why would you limit mm -hmm. one without the other and think that God won't use therapy or counseling in order for you to reach someone or them to help reach you or establish some type mm -hmm. of relationship or anything like that? Mm -hmm. um, the, the verse I was looking at, which I'm pretty sure this was just confirmation for uh, the vision and everything, was Colossians 1.28, because you were talking about Maturity a minute ago, and Colossians one twenty eight says, "Him we him we proclaim, 
warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Mm -hmm. Growing up. Growing up. We're called children of God, yes, and nowhere in the Bible are we called adults, but we are supposed to mature. We're supposed Mm -hmm. to get off of the milk of the word and move into the meat. And I think that's where where we are now is we've we've had so much milk mm-hmm. and it's it, it ended up oh like gosh. rotting our teeth out because we weren't getting protein we weren't getting the meat of the word so we were stuck on the milk of the word we weren't growing up mm-hmm. and then when you're already preaching just milk there's that tendency for some not all because and I want to clarify too that I don't think there's anything wrong with pastors that maybe their calling is to bring milk to a congregation in order that it would be like the stepping stone, if you will, for like someone coming to the faith. Because, I mean, if you, and I don't know, maybe that's, I'm wrong on that. There's a time for that. That's what I'm saying. Like you have that time where you need the milk, but then you do have to move up to the meat. So I think some people, maybe they are supposed to bring a little more milk than meat, or maybe their meat is more milky, so it's easier to, um, Digest kind of thing, if that makes sense. Not that it's like diluted or it's it's wrong gospel, but maybe it's just they've they've found a way to make it easier for people. And I'm not talking about compromising on 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 things. I'm just talking about making it more uh, easy to understand mm-hmm. and and digest the word in you. But um, yeah, we're supposed to move up from that and get into the meat. But yeah. we've had so much milk for so long, and then you have the the false prophet aspect where. Maybe they did start out just preaching just milk, and then they've shifted into, well, now my church is so big, you know, I'm worried about my reputation, I'm worried about um, filling the seats, I'm worried about people coming back. So they start finding ways to navigate Mm -hmm. around, and that's where you run into the danger when you're more worried about filling seats than feeding souls, because then you're going to measure your word, and not that... Not that it's not important to measure your words and not just come up and say whatever off the cuff, but they measure it so much that they avoid yes. calling anything out. And then that's where you get into that cotton candy Christianity where yeah. everything's just a, a rotten mess yeah. that does nothing for your soul. And yeah, it might taste good for a minute, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, like I've mm-hmm. said before, I'd rather you hate me for a minute here in life and thank me in eternity because I I'm listening you to out. a guy out of Atlanta. I, I don't know if you've heard of him. His name's Philip Mitchell. His church is 28 night. I listened to him from time to time, and he was talking the other day about um, how much self-help preaching there is in the church now. And, and it just, you know, and I've watched it over the years. I've seen the evolution. I've seen it, you know, go from hardcore, legalistic, you know, all of that. And now I, I, I agree with him. I think it's just way too much of that. There's got to be that balance. You've got to find a way to get people where they need to be. But at the same time, the meat of the word has to be given in, in a way that is not judgmental and hateful, but it tells the truth. Amanda, I'm glad you're here for the discussion tonight. Thank you for sharing your story. I'm sorry that you experienced that. Um, sometimes things like that happen, and it was a part of your journey. And we don't judge you for it. God bless your heart. We pray for you. And thank you for sharing it. I know it might not be easy to do it, but God bless you for sharing it. Um, we're a loving community, and we, you know, sometimes things like that happen. And uh, we hate to hear that, but God's God still, and He still loves you more than anything, and we do too. Glad to have you there. But tonight, that was the discussion, and that was the, the, the thing that was just burning in me that I had to get to people, um, is to realize and remember that just because I don't see it, does it, revival, just because I don't, might not see it doesn't mean that revival is not happening. Just because I might not see God's favor on my life doesn't mean that I don't have his favor on my life. God's at work. God is always at work, and you're going to see that. You're going to see that. There's a, eh, never mind. Step, you're, you're getting close to, to Sunday. Sunday's, Come on. Sunday's notes a little bit on that. Well, let's one. talk about that. What are you going to preach Sunday? Sunday, uh, obviously, we're still in Jude. Um, been there for six years now. Been, <laughs> what is it, five times now? Five, five times. or six yeah. weeks? <laughs> we will be doing uh, 14 to 16. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were talking about um, the sovereignty of God the other day and just with the end of the year. And I, it's to me, it's oh, it's yeah. so planned out by God. It's just hilarious how everything mm-hmm. is working out. Um, we will be in Jude <laughs> literally up until Christmas, which 
It's probably going to disappoint some people to not have your stereotypical Christmas message, but we do still, if you haven't been here before, on uh, Christmas Eve, on December 24th, we do our our candle, our candlelight service. Uh, it's only an hour. It's absolutely beautiful. Don't and we it. have uh, several new songs this year that I'm excited to, to see the praise team. New singers. We're, yeah, and we got new singers Who coming did in. did you know? Um, I, I'm excited. But, yeah, we're going to be there until the 22nd. And then um, we have the Christmas Eve candlelight service. And God willing, I think the message that Back you're going to bring. Backup quarterback is coming in. And then the message to start the year off. Yeah, that's, I think I got Y'all had this, this long conversation in the um, chat the other night, in the music chat, about 2020, 2025. Oh, yeah. Like, come on. And so that sparked the sermon. That was... Yeah, Woo. there's if if you if you want to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole, um, go look up the biblical because the Bible's all about numbers and all the numbers have meaning. Go look up the biblical um, uh, meaning of twenty and the biblical meaning of twenty five, and uh, you'll have an idea of going to be good. I think what next year is I think next year is going to be just wild. Um, it's, going, it's already getting there. It's it's, just, you can see it shifting, but yes. now after that discussion that we had with the meaning behind those numbers, and that's literally 2025 is the next year, uh, I'm even more excited than I have been. We've gone to, through six to ten months of what in the world is happening? <laughs> hell. That's what it was. Hell. What, just hell. What, in the, <laughs> what is going on? And then... All of a sudden, we, we all believe, and we're believing together that that is now working for our good. Um, I can't say it enough. Um, the numbers of people, that the new people that are streaming now into this church, new families, your age, my age, that are streaming into this, fa- this family, um, God is good. And it just is a testimony to the fact that you don't get swayed, uh, you don't get scared, you just trust God and stay the course. And if you trust God and stay the course, God's going to do it. Well, that's the thing. We're supposed to... To go forth and proclaim the gospel, preach the world. Are we going to live stream what? The candlelight candle service? Light? I think we always do. I think I we did it. last year. I, I don't know. We, use the live, we will live stream it, yes. Um, what was I going with? The, uh, the family's coming in. Oh, proclaiming the word. Um, we're supposed to be doing that. And we shouldn't be compromising on any of it. I mean, the Bible doesn't. You read the Bible and there's some messy Straight stuff up. in there. I mean, you mm-hmm. got murder and incest and you got the uh, the tent peg going through someone's head and then Phineas stabbing the, the couple having sex through the back and it pins them to the ground. I mean, it's it's unrated. What? We just went to our rating right here in yeah, the family the, room. The Bible's our rated. What do you expect? <laughs> you ever read the Song of Solomon? That's what, I love trying to have conversations with the, the girls about it, the kids. <laughs> and you're like, uh, how do I... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Even Let's like the, the children's story, Bible like out. Like the story uh, yesterday, just real quick, yesterday Yesterday, like um, Brooke and Rodney and Kelsey, and obviously myself, we were somehow we got on like the subject of Noah's Ark mm-hmm. and like preaching it or you know talking about it to kids in like kids' church. And you know, you always think in Sunday school, you just remember like the, the picture of the little boat on the water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, big. you know, nobody thinks about the fact that like the bodies that would have been floating around you in the water and. <laughs> Uh, you know, as it was raining and the boat sealed up, the people banging on the walls trying to get... Like, nobody thinks Scared. about that. Like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not this <laughs> really happy story, but that's what it is. So anyways, the proclaiming the truth thing, that's, that's my heart behind it. And that's what God honors because we shouldn't be compromising on his word. We shouldn't be, you know, cutting stuff out and trying Amen. to find a way to make it pretty. You just got to preach it how it is. You got to speak it how it is because it is the truth. Amen. And that's... That's why a lot of the times to just, uh, I guess, air it out and put some clarification on it. When I'm like, hey, I don't, I don't really care if you come back next week. Mm-hmm. You know, I hope you go find a different church that maybe mm-hmm. is more your style as long as it's biblical. But it, my, my goal is not to, to, to fill these seats. I'm trying to feed souls. I'm trying to reach the lost. And then, you know, one of the comments that I've heard before is you, you're not caring for the people that are already here. Well, I, Jesus didn't come for the, the, the righteous. He came for to the save sinner. the sick. He came for the lost. We the need to sin, be the going. The righteous are supposed to be helping the, the disciple the That's others. That's the goal. The goal is the lost come in, they get found, and then they help go get more lost. Mm-hmm. And while they're doing that, they continue coming to church to get fed, mm-hmm. to be matured in their walk 
walk as Christians. Right. And that it's like this this give and take was, kind of thing. You come in, you get mature, but we still keep preaching to the lost. But as we're preaching to the lost and bringing them in, you're <laughs> still getting more mature. Hey, Amanda, if I was to walk into your church covered in tattoos, riding a Harley, <laughs> I told you my testimony, would I still be welcome? Would you still be, hold on, wait. Have you seen? I have a Harley symbol here. I used to be a motorcycle and cop. As you so. can see, uh, I'm completely covered. <laughs> that was a moment. So that would answer your question. Welcome. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to take my shirt off, but I am completely Hello. <laughs> covered on my chest and stomach. When we go to prison, the prisoners <laughs> usually come to us first, if that tells you anything. So, yeah. Prison so, ministry. Prison ministry. Bye. Yeah. So, Sunday will be um, Jude 14 to 16. Um, going to be good. And I'm kind of, I'm looking forward to it. And I think hopefully, never mind. I don't know. That's a weird thing. Powerful. To say. But there's a, there's a, the part of Enoch in there. Ooh. And so I know somebody's going to be looking forward to seeing, you know, how am I going to, how are you going to weave in about the book of Enoch and all that kind of stuff. But, um, uh, Enoch, you're probably going to be let down about that part. <laughs> Stay biblical. So, yeah, Don't. that's the thing. Um, but with right. that, uh, I'm ready to go get dinner. If you have not checked out our, our web pages and all that kind of stuff yet, and maybe this is not just for Amanda, but everybody else, if you haven't looked at our web pages yet or lately, go check that out. Uh, Amanda, uh, not Amanda, uh, Kelsey, Kelsey Cochran has just dropped a new shirt that is. Off the chain. That thing is awesome. And it's pre-sale. It's so. beautiful. It's pre-sale, so you can get one. They're super cheap. It's a really cool shirt. Love to have you get one and represent. Uh, don't forget, when you come on Sunday, stop in the information center. They're still giving away free family decals. They're still sitting on the counter. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're no charge, free, free of charge. Everybody pick one up and just represent family. Um, Good stuff going on. Don't miss any of it. 9.50 on Sunday. I'm telling everybody, not 10 o'clock, 9.50. That's the thing. You're going you're gonna to have to start coming earlier. To get um, your seat. Because it's getting Come to on. that point, which is a... I have wanted that the entire life of our church. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen it. No. Uh, and I, the last... Well, I wasn't here last week, but last at least few the, weeks. the week before, I remember uh, there was more people here early than there were the week I'm before on. that. So it's going to get to the point where... It's We're exciting. gonna have to start thinking of some some we gotta creative it out. ways. It'll <laughs> to be all right. We'll put more seats in here. We'll sit on the floor. We'll Take them out. out. Just bring a mat. Tanya sits on the floor over here every Sunday. Yeah. So we'll figure it out. I think it's great and. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we're going in Jude. I think I got my confirmation tonight on um, the future of the church. Come on. But that will be, God willing, I'm going to be praying about it because I don't want to rush into anything. Um, God willing, that will be more towards the end of the year or the, the, the new year kind of thing. And then I'm still praying on the next revival night. Uh, the first one. I loved. I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's cool to nice have relax. that different atmosphere without an agenda, where it's it's more laid <laughs> web pages, where it's more laid back and you're not stressing, you know, time and. Um, Who is that trouble? Well, I don't really. She's. I don't know. I'm gonna get her number later. <laughs> so those of you that don't know, Pod I'm talking about my wife, <laughs> Kelsey um, Cochran. Uh, I need to get Kelsey on the couch. Hashtag. She's been again. She's been a she couple. Been here been for a, a while. Weeks. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the, I, I loved the first revival night. And then yeah. I was going to say not worrying about being polished, but I already don't worry about being polished. So <laughs> it was wow. nice to not worry even more about not being polished. But it, it was a great night. And I think the atmosphere was phenomenal with the way the Holy Spirit moved within the building. Mitch, um, it's not that you drive too bad. It just says family. It don't say family church. That way they, <laughs> it could just be, hey, I love my family. Get one, stick it on the truck. Hey, maybe they'll follow you to church and then Woo! stalk you into the building and then they'll find Jesus, Jesus that way. They'll find the Lord right here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Sunday, come come early, 9.50, 9.40, 9.45, whatever floats your boat. Um, but I'm telling you, if, if you're one of those, I'm waiting until after 10 o'clock, eventually... You won't Soon, find a seat. You're not going to find a seat, and which is fine with me. If you want to sit on the floor in the aisles, sit hey, the floor. We'll put you I'm, in information I'm about center. it. We've we are the tear we'll off the roof church. You know, just come and sit wherever you Kathy want. Kathy Cochran. If there's no seats, come hang out and void your kids. <laughs> Always recruiting. I love you. There we go. All right. With that, um, we'll wrap it up. So right. Sunday, come 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 early. We're we're continuing. Almost said finishing somehow. We're continuing the contend series in Jude. Uh, if you if you 
don't know anything about it, go to, go read Jude. It's a very neglected um, book letter uh, right before the book of Revelation. Uh, it's only 25 verses, so you can read it in like 10 minutes or less. There's a lot in it. Um, and if you want to dive in any more, obviously, on our YouTube, which you can find from our Facebook or familychurch.social, you can find our YouTube link. Or our web got, pages. Our web on pages. the interweb. You've got all of, our, uh, all of our messages on there. And if you're interested as well... Um, we have an app. If you go on our on our home web page <laughs> and scroll down uh, on the World Wide Web, if you scroll down, you can find the link for our app. Um, I was working on trying to get it on the TV. I don't know what became of that. I'll have to check if it is. I, I think they were wanting us to change like the name and stuff for the app in order for it to work for mm-hmm. TV. So I kind of backed off from that. We'll but I'll, I'll look back on it. But the, it, it's on the phone, and it's got access to we all can, of our messages. We can start recording it on VHS tapes. There's a, yeah, we'll put it in on the, uh, the cassette with the, the cable that comes out for the CD player. Uh, but it has all of our message, messages on there and our groups. Uh, and if you're not in a group on our app, get in a group. They are a lot of fun, uh, a lot of, lot of good community in there. And there's a bunch of different ministries and all that, like with Grief Share and the, the Family Care Team and the, the House of Prayer. If you're interested in coming on Saturdays to our prayer, we have the House of Prayer group for that. Um, and it is open. The, the Saturday prayer, 5 p.m., that is open. Come in and, and pray. Hey. I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arm of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.